2019 income requirements for fiancé visas. In order to successfully be approved for a K-1 fiancé visa that allows your fiancé to travel to the USA, well, U.S. immigration must be confident that you, the U.S. sponsor, have enough financial strength to support and feed your future family. They must be convinced that there is no chance your new family would need public benefits such as welfare or food stamps to survive. And at the end of the fiancé visa process, your fiancé attends the interview at the U.S. consulate. And this is when approval or denial is granted. And this is the time that your financial evidences are submitted. It's critical to understand before you apply what the requirements are. Well, to avoid surprises and denial especially as the amount the requirements have increased this year from last year is much greater, well, than we've seen in decades. I am Fred Wall, the Visa Coach, and I help you get through a confusing and frustrating immigration process so that you can have a happy life together in the USA with your foreign partner. Now today, I will share with you what the financial requirements in 2019 are and how to demonstrate, well, that you meet them. And if you can't meet them, well, I'll tell you what you can do. And if your fiancé is from Philippines, Vietnam, Nigeria, or Indonesia, well, please watch to the end of the video because towards the end, I've got some bad news for you if your income is too low. Now, on to today's topic. What are the income requirements to obtain a fiancé visa in 2019? In order to successfully petition for your fiancé to come to the USA, the U.S. citizen sponsor must demonstrate to immigration he or she has enough income coming in to support future spouse and household. And the way the financial eligibility calculation works is the sponsor's annual income adjusted for the number of dependents his combined household will have should be at least 100% of the Department of Health and Human Services, called HHS's, poverty guidelines for his state of residence. Each year in February or March, the Department of Health and Human Services publishes their poverty guidelines. And as announced in 2019, the guidelines have risen up about $450 from last year. As of March 2008, 2019, for residents in the continental USA, the financial eligibility thresholds for K-1 fiancé visas are as follows. The required annual income is $16,910 for two persons in the household, $21,330 for three persons, $25,750 for four persons, and for each additional person, add $4,420. Now, the financial eligibility thresholds are lower for active military and higher if you're a resident of Hawaii or Alaska. Now to demonstrate his income or your income, the U.S. sponsor normally provides your most recent federal tax return, three to six pay stubs showing year-to-date earnings, plus a letter from employer confirming his job and what his annual pay is. Cash assets can count as an alternative to income. So in some cases, a sponsor's income might be too low, but if he has money in the bank, cash assets can be used to substitute for annual income. For example, stocks, bonds, certificates of deposit, cash in the checking account can be used. Other assets that cannot be used, cannot be easily turned to cash, with the exception of equity in your home, are not usable. $5 of cash assets, the same as $1 annual income. For example, a retired American fiancé visa sponsor living in the continental USA. He's got no income and no dependents. He'd need to have, well, five times the requirement, $16,910, or total $84,500 in cash assets to qualify for the fiancé visa. Alternatively, a combination of income and assets will work. For example, if the American sponsor's income is, well, $10,000 per year, then he would need to have cash assets of $34,550, cash or convertible assets, to qualify. This is calculated by subtracting $10,000 from the annual requirement of $16,910, and then the difference, $6,910 times 5, 
equals 34,550 of cash assets needed. Now, if the sponsor's income or assets are not enough to achieve the eligibility threshold, well, he can ask a friend or relative to act as joint sponsor. Just like buying a car, a second person could co-sign your loan. In this case, he's financially joint sponsoring your petition. Now, when a joint sponsor is used, the size of the household increases. The combined household for the financial calculations would include the household size of the sponsor combined with the household size of the co-sponsor. For example, a college student petitioning for his fiance asks his dad to joint sponsor. Both the college student and the father would each complete an affidavit of support. And the student's household is just going to be two persons, himself and his fiance. But the father's household would be the father, the mother, and two, two, two siblings still at home. Okay? Thus, the combined household would be six persons. And the combined income of both sponsor and joint sponsor would have to be 34590 or more. Okay? Now, a joint sponsor can be used for most fiance visa petitions but not all. Sorry, but the U.S. consulates in Philippines, Indonesia, Vietnam, and Nigeria do not allow the use of a co-sponsor for a fiancé visa. So if you are applying for a fiancé visa and suspect, well, you might need a joint sponsor, the best thing to do before filing any application, before proceeding, is to contact the consulate directly and ask them whether the consulate's policies permit the use of a financial joint sponsor or not. And if they don't allow a joint sponsor and your income and assets still won't be enough, well, then you have to take a different path from the fiancé visa. And the different path is the spouse visa. This was Fred Wall, the visa coach. Now please like or add your comments to this video and then go to visacoach.com and sign up for the Visa Coach monthly newsletter. Each month, it's full of tips and advice on marriage-based immigration, and it's free of charge. And when you sign up, you get two free ebooks. Well, I have written 120 K-1 visa interview practice questions and five things you must know before starting on your visa. Now, finally, when you are ready to get started, you can call me for your complimentary case evaluation. Speak with me directly. If you are considering hiring Visa Coach to personally guide you through your immigration adventure, join him for a complimentary case evaluation. He listens to you to learn the red flags and strengths of your case, your eligibility and goals. He suggests which visa is right for you, the best strategy to get it, and how soon your partner can join you. To learn more about Visa Coach's services and how he can help you, book your free case evaluation today.